you were away, the MC was introducing a lot of boxers at ringside, including yourself. It's almost like a sort of boxers' convention here tonight. This is the one, this is a fighter's fight. Everybody wants to see this one. This is what we call a tradesman's fight. Um, it's not got the media attention of a Ben Newbank fight, but it's every bit as good for quality, believe me. These are two potentially world-class fighters, and everyone in the trade, Dave, as you said, are here to see it happen. I'm sure it's going to be a cracker. Well, Mike Barrett, one of the finest promoters in Great Britain, and no mean manager either. And a decent golfer, and a good bloke, leading in Gary Jacobs. Good reception to Gary Jacobs. Good following. Actually, he's been away in America training for this round. Teddy Atlas, that's Mr. Atlas getting in the ring now, actually. So he's obviously taking the fight very, very serious, and rightly so. Gary Jacobs, former Commonwealth champion, lost it to Donovan Boucher, former international welterweight champion, was stripped of that title. Scottish welterweight champion, but lost his way just a little bit. Lost two of his last four. Jacobs looking sternly determined that he's going to meet a good friend of mine and someone who's nicknamed the Iceman, and I'm sure he'll live up to it tonight. This is going to be one hell of a fight. Oh, he's got uh, he's got George Francis in his corner tonight. I haven't seen that before. Actually, Mickey brought George in for this fight, and uh, you know George would like to work with Mickey a little bit longer. He was saying to me to get him used to a southpaw, but um, I'm sure he's going to be in great shape because you know George is a good conditioner, and uh, I'm sure Mickey uses ready. Well, George Francis, of course, guided John Conte to the World Line Heavyweight Title, one of the finest trainers there is. Atmosphere buzzing. Here's Mike Goodall once again. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. Sponsored by Storm Seal Matchroom Promotions, proudly presents a welterweight contest of ten three-minute rounds. Between, in the red corner, wearing the blue trunks from Swiss Cottage in Glasgow, Gary Jacobs! All I can say from the point that Mickey uses, Gary Jacobs needs to be very, very and smart the Jews can Ron punch Ryan, George Francis as hard as John McGarvey for his weight. This is going to be one of a fight. I'm excited, Dave. I've been looking forward to it a long time. The weight's level. Dave Paris is the referee. It, the one thing that worries me about Gary Jacobs, Jim, he's fought less than three rounds this year. They had two fights, one went less than a round, yeah. one went less than two rounds. On the other hand, Mickey Hughes fought five fights. We've seen them all. They were due to have met at the Albert Hall in May. Mickey had a few weight problems that night. This is going to be fascinating. I know Mickey's going to start fast. Swings Maybe. over a right. He's going to look to start fast, Mickey is. Gary Jacobs, the southpaw, the better boxer. Mickey Hughes in the red, perhaps the bigger puncher. No question about that. And as we were discussing earlier, a real make or break for both boys because defeat would set both of them back quite a good long left way. Up. And he has got a good left hook. Mickey Hughes, he can take you out with either hand. And Jacobs can bang a bit too. The right hand, traditional counter to the southpaw. You know, he's professional experience there. Um, Jacobs has fought better quality opponents, but Mickey's had a very long career. He's boxing Olympic Games, very good amateur, and, you know, two very experienced fighters. Jacob's going to have to get a little bit cautious to his right hand because if Mickey hits him flush, he'll know. And Jacob's turn to land a couple of good lefts and back Hughes up.
Jacob looking very relaxed, showing his experience, not panicking, nice and cool. Trying to work Mickey Hughes out early in the contest. Good concentration from Jacob, he's really mind on the job. Mickey's looking to unload with big shots very early. Feel the tension in the air with these two. They both know it's on the line. Good class of shots from Jacobs there. And the South poor jab already pinking up. Hughes's face just a little bit in this opening round. Ten to go. Both boys getting involved. They know this is a big fight for both of them. Good left foot on the bell there. Interesting round, Dave. Yeah, it's um this could turn into quite a fight. It really could. From a connoisseur's point of view, you know, Gary Jacobs put a smart opening round there, he nice and relaxed and sensed the power of Mickey Hughes. Um, you know, Mickey got off from the start, he, he knows it's his, his career chance to break through and he was looking for big punches right from the off That's and right. it's the right tactic. Well, the world seemed to be at Gary Jacobs' feet, but lost to Buddy McGurd on points, lost to Donovan Boucher, the French-Canadian, on points. And, uh, all right, he's won a couple since then. He's yeah. a good shot there. Yeah. I gave Jacobs that opening round, but uh, the last two opponents he's met stopped Mike Durvan inside a round with the left hook to the body. We saw that. Pascal Lorsey, the French boy, stopped him in two. Now, I'm not saying that Mickey, uh, Mickey Hughes has fought real quality man, but he's, uh, he's kept busy, which is something Gary Jacobs hasn't. We shall see whether that proves conclusive. Round two. Jacobs in the red. Jacobs uh, in the blue, I should say. Hughes in the red. Well, Jacob's in the blue and using the Chavez shorts. <laughs> He's idle, of course. You know, Mickey's got to work with a pace and, and not just rely on knocking him out of every single shot because Jacob's a smart fighter. A very experienced. He's, he's met the Buddy McGurts of this world, remember. times remember with views can end the end of any fight with one well, punch. This is this is the one thing uh, the general consensus among the pundits at ringside is that is that Gary Jacobs is just simply too good a boxer for, for Mickey Hughes. But the thing as you quote so rightly say Jim that no matter how far behind that right Mickey hand? Hughes is he can take you out with a single shot. I think you hurt Jacobs there actually Everyone in here always glued to this. I'm sure Jacob has felt the power now because that right hand again. Jacob's doing the sensible thing, coming back with short clusters of his own, but he needs to keep his wits about him here. Jacobs forcing Hughes to cover. And the Hughes jab isn't scoring at all, falling well short. Scoring shots at the moment coming almost exclusively from Gary Jacobs. Yeah, both, both these boys are in tremendous condition, that's for sure. Uh, if he's going to go the distance, it's going to be action all the way.
good variety of punches from Jacobs and looks like the guy's got very good hand speed as well. Well, the guy's a class act, there's no doubt about that. But his chin is going to be tested before the night is out. A little bit of um, needle creeping in between Mickey and Jacobs very early in the contest and uh, that can be expected at this level. Both these boys know this is a crunch fight for both of them. And Jacobs has still got to keep his, his ice bag on his head and not get involved in a war with Mickey Hughes because you know, Mickey's a very, very dangerous boy every single round right up to the end of the contest. He's never beaten until that final bell. Now Jacobs is on paper the better boxer and he, he should stick to what he's good at. Not so far, Gary Jacobs has been very impressive in the opening two rounds, boxing very sensible, good clusters of shots and showing his experience at this level. Well, both boys have got the supporters clubs here tonight as we look at some action from that second. Now is the right hand. It was a good shot. That was the one we talked about early in the round, that was. Jacobs took that well. Testing to his, his chin. You know, he stood up to that well. Mickey Hughes ready in the centre of the ring. Round three, scheduled for ten. First two rounds to the Scots boy. Don't think there can be too much doubt about that. When Mickey's getting, trying to get through with the big, the big bombs, Jacob's working away with the clusters of shots and getting through as well. And a run above us, and Jacob's winging in the body shots. Hughes trying to work for the openings, but Jacob's just a little bit too quick for him, a little bit too savvy at the moment. Yeah, showing plenty of class, Jacob's not nice and relaxed. <laughs> Some of those body shots right on the line. Dave Paris hovering. Keeping a close eye on them. Yeah, Jacob's concentrating his attack on the body downstairs. Could pay dividends for him later in the fight. And that's what he did against Mike Durvant. Knocked him out with a left hook to the body. Duncan Jacobs has learned that boxing at the top is the concentration side of things. He's, he's really on the ball for this one. You can see him thinking, thinking, thinking. Well, he's had grudge fights, or oh, grudge fights, showdowns, if you like, against domestic boxers before George Collins, remember? And he comprehensively outpointed out, uh, out Collins over ten rounds. And Rocky Kelly, I remember. And Rocky Kelly, well, that was a war. And Hughes on the receiving end. And yet to unload one of the big ones. And having trouble finding the way through, Jim. Yeah, Jacobs is boxing very, very clever, very smart. Just moving off, not standing there in a toe-to-toe, -to -toe, just keeping it mid-distance and just pecking away and edging himself in front. A really interesting battle. Well, any doubts that anybody might have had about Gary Jacobs must be swiftly evaporating. George Franz has got a bit of work to do, and Mickey Hughes looking a little bit puzzled by it all at the moment. He's yet to work his man out. It's it's hard enough fighting a southpaw at the best of times, but this boy here is a very very good southpaw. Yeah, well, you know, we always say as we go back to corner after sharing the ring of the good southpaw, they should drown him at birth. I'm sure Mickey's probably thinking that right now. But Mickey's done his own work, and I'm sure um, still to see the best of Mickey's fight goes on. You know, he's fighting Jacobs, he knows he's, he knows he's in against the top boy. You know, the boy can fight, and uh, Mickey won't be surprised. Well, George Francis 
is a useful man to have in your corner for a fight like this. Oh, no question. No question about that. No, he's, um, he's been there, and um, Mickey obviously believes in the fellow. And uh, that's a big bonus in his bag. Fourth round, then. Gary Jacobs in front. The boy in blue, the southpaw. And Mickey Hughes in red. Got work to do. You can see Hughes just aching to unload that right hand or, or the big left hook that he's renowned for. But Jacobs, such a slippery opponent, and boxing very, very well tonight. Doing everything right at the moment, Jacobs. That was a good shot from Hughes that time. Screw the right hand through. It's the concentration of Jacobs, he's getting caught very infrequently from Mickey Hughes' point of view. Well, Hughes has got through with a couple of reasonable rights, a third one in this round, but uh, not enough to trouble Jacobs as yet. Now, Jacobs is steady and coming back with little clusters, so the fight's very, very competitive, very, very close all the way through. Third round for Hughes, this, though. Definitely. A good right hand. Jacobs always tries to come back with good solid shots of his own if he gets nailed. That's experience. Try to take the play away. Good work from Jacobs. Yeah, he's got plenty of class moves, and when he uses them, he looks class fire. He's, oh. ob he's obviously a little in order of power, you, so he's, he's just choosing his time when to step in and unload. Well, the round drawing to a close. Well, Mickey Hughes is being outboxed at the moment, Jim, and showing no real signs of being able to get through with these heavier shots of his. Yeah, it'd be interesting to, to get what's going through Mickey's mind now, because he knows that Jacobs is just probably shading the contest. He knows it's a ten-round fight, and there's everything at stake. So I'm, I'm sure somewhere along the line he's going to have to go out and gamble what he did there and go for big shots, because Jacobs is uh, just nicking away and edging himself in front, as you were saying, Dave. But good show from Jacobs. Yes, excellent at the moment. Both boys unmarked. No, I've always got that wait for it moment with him uses in the ring and that's what you've got to do every time he's there because he really does punch, believe me.
been from Jacob's viewpoint all the time he's scoring points and that's uh, that's going to be quite a long road for Mickey Hughes to come back and it's looking increasingly likely even though there's well still a long way to go that he's going to have to pull out something quite spectacular in the last half of this fight because yeah. he's an awful long way behind at the moment and as Jacobs gets the feel for the fight then he'll, you know, he'll start looking better and better as you imagine he's, he's got to remain cautious because every so often Hughes just lands one and Jacobs just uh, takes a pace or two back you can never ride off a big puncher not when they punch as big as Mickey Hughes but you know full credit to Jacobs he's got some smart fight and steaming in now, and backs Hughes up in his own corner. Hughes tucks up and ties him up. Uh, good four or five jabs on the trot there from Jake as he tried to follow through. Mickey tried to come back now and take it away from him. These boys want it bad. I'm sure Jacobs is quietly pleased with himself so far in his corner row as well. I've given him every round on my card. I mean, I'm not, I think, being unduly harsh on Mickey Hughes, but he's simply not throwing any shots at all, really. He's, he, he's throwing them singly, and uh, Jacobs, if there were any questions so far, he's answered them all. He's, uh, his career really was in the balance. Defeat tonight, well, heaven knows where he would have gone. There's Brendan Ingle there. When have you seen Brendan Ingle acting as a bucket man? Oh, goodness. Yeah, Mickey's really got to start gambling now on, on going for the knockout. He's certainly capable of it against anyone he can, can now, but so far, Jacobs has been very elusive. And full credit to the boy. Well, five gone, five to go. And I've given all five to the boy in blue, Gary Jacobs, from Glasgow via Swiss Cottage in North London. Jacobs went to America to prepare for this contest. He was out there for a month or so, and, he, and he's obviously done his own work. He's concentrating on boxing very, very smartly, not getting involved in trying to test his um, strength against Mickey. He's just boxing very sensibly. Caught with the left there. But as has happened so often through this fight, Hughes getting through with the odd single shot, but no more. I think as the fight develops, Dave, we could see Jacobs trying to fancy his arm a little bit of probably stopping Mickey. So it could be a big mistake, you know. Jacobs has cut over his left eye. Hughes won't need no more inspir inspiration than that. There's nothing that can spur a fight on more. Well, this is Hughes' best round so far by a long way. Mickey's starting to flow. And that cut is in the worst possible place. It doesn't look too bad, but it's in the worst place. It is right alongside the left eyelid, inside the eyelid. Good and Jake, shots in both fighters, real quality stuff. It's taken off this fight now. Jacobs knows that's not a good cut. There's never a good cut, but that, it couldn't have come at worse a time either, you know. Halfway through the fight, and Mickey's got the buzz now to go and rip this title or this chance away from Jacobs. Jacobs is chancing his arm there, toe to toe. Great stuff. And as every second passes, that cut looks worse. And Jacobs coming down off the toes, trying to land the big shots. Hughes trying to find the opening. 
getting through with the right hand, but Gary coming back some good quality shots as well. Fair play, Gary Jacobs. You know, the experience, he hasn't panicked, staying cool, keeping it together. Good round, though, for Mickey. Well, that's where the cut is. And that's, that's a bad place for a cut. As you say, Jim, there's never a good place for a cut, but uh, between eyelid and eyebrow, that's uh, that's not bright. Well, they're working overtime on it now, and you know, I'm sure he's got good corner and working there. You'll need it. There we go. You can there you go. You get a perfect view of it. It's a nasty one. Yeah, you know, from Mickey Hughes's point of view, this is um, you know, this is business. He's got to go out there. And he's got to rip it to pieces if he can. Because you've got to win by hook or by crook, and you know, don't like to sand mercenary, but this is a mercenary game as far as that side of it's concerned. And you know, Mickey will be really pleased that he's, he's, he's inflicted damage Second on Gary Jacobs. Round seven. Dave Paris went and had a look at the eye in the inter round. Four to go. Jacobs well ahead on points, but cut. You know, Mickey's been getting through with the occasional right hand and single shots. So you, you know, you need something more right hand, left foot, something a little bit more faster and sharper to really get, get Jacobs out of his rhythm. He's Gary Jacobs settled into a nice rhythm now, and Mickey's got to do something to offset him. Good shot, right hand left foot, but Gary comes straight back, three good shots of his own. These boys are really in there tonight, it's great stuff. Living up to all expectations, Dave. Yeah, it's an excellent fight. The eye just starting to weep blood again. You can probably see a little smear on Jacob's left cheek. Jacobs letting the shots go. The head's getting a little close at times. Yes, this is a rough and tumble well, one I wouldn't now. like to say how that cut was caused, but wouldn't surprise me if it was heads. The corner did a good job, but the cut has opened up again. And Jacobs trying to pour it on. Mickey swollen under his right eye now. Jacobs got through a couple of good shots there. Good shot from Hughes, good right hand up. Jake and a left. Did that well, but... And three of the best shots that Mickey Hughes has landed right on that belt. Jake his chin stood up to them. You know, tremendous. Mickey really did get through some power blasts there. I still don't think Mickey's got through with anything really destructive that I know he can land. But that's, you know, full credit to Gary Jacobs, boxing very smartly. Even though he's been cut, he's still nice and cool. And, you know, that's something you can't buy, that's experience. Well, it's taken a lot to get Gary Jacobs to take a backward step or two this fight, but he had to there. 
but he's still let's not be under any illusion he is a long way ahead on points Dave Paris as we talked to you once again taking a very very close look at that left eye of the former Commonwealth and international welterweight champion he can use his right eyes very swollen as well so they're both carrying the scars of battle I'm sure Jacobs has noticed as well oh the left hand and oh that go. is the one punch finish there you go he's, he's gone out. he's out oh what a finish what a knockout what can you say? This kid, I've got to say, is the best puncher we've ever had in this country. Absolutely thunderbolt, and that's all over. That was the left hook, the main weapon. And Gary Jacobs, who had really let us make no bounds about it, boxed Mickey Hughes's head off. The one mistake he has made throughout this fight, and that was it. Jim, the one opening that Mickey Hughes has had, and, well, poor Gary Jacobs is still out. You know, I've, I'm just feeling for Gary Jacobs right now. You know, I was in the same position myself not too long ago. I've sparred hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of rounds with Mickey Hughes, and I'm, I'm not just saying it, you know, the guy punches so hard, it's frightening. You know, I just hope Gary Jacobs can fully recover now as he's laying there on the floor, because he'd box marvellous. Well, there's John Morris, Secretary of the Board, George Francis, Mickey Hughes. And what an unbelievable finish, because, as I said, he was so far behind on points, Jim. Absolutely. You know, Dave, I kept saying it, I had this buzz of feeling inside me. It's almost a fear for the people from Mickey Hughes' fight, because I know the power the guy possesses, and, you know, Mickey can only go on to bigger and better things here. And, you know, Gary Jacobs, I just feel for the boy, and I really hope off the box, it's so marvellous that... If it's going to be OK. Well, what we're going to do is uh, take a short break. Barry Hearn there, delighted with his boy, Mickey Hughes, George Francis, Brendan Ingle, and Gary Jacobs coming round, which is good to see. As I say, we're going to take a little break, and uh, we'll come back, and hopefully we'll be able to tell you that Gary Jacobs is on his feet, and we'll also be talking to Mickey Hughes. <laughs> Welcome back. The good news is Gary Jacobs back on his feet and walked unaided from the ring. Let's now hear from Mickey Hughes talking to George Zeleny. Mickey, we seem to have you behind in the fight, but then a perfect left hook finished it. Yeah, well, I think I owe it all to my trainer, George Francis, because uh, to tell the truth, I was a mile behind. And uh, he, he just said to me, keep going, this is your night, you're not going to lose, just hang in there and it will come, the big one will come. Yeah. And uh, that's what I did and uh, started that round, I just caught him with a left hook, and it was all over. The sixth round, you, you cut him, and that seemed to be the turning point. From that moment on, you seemed to come on and get yeah. to him, didn't you? Well, to tell you the truth, I didn't even know I'd cut him. You know, I was in another world. It was only George told me. Yeah. And uh, well, I just kept soldiering on and uh, paid off in the end. So what now, Mickey? What next? Um, well, hopefully I'll get a title shot, uh, European Commonwealth, I don't mind, as long as there's some money in it, that's the main thing. Right. <laughs> Congratulations, Mickey, a great win, well done. Thank you very much. Well, there you go, as long as there's a few bob in it, and who can blame him? Nasty uh, swelling round the right eye, signs of battle, but, uh, boy, what a good fight that was. Mickey Hughes KOing Gary Jacobs in eight rounds. So then, the show goes on, next Wednesday we've got more... British title action for you, super featherweight bout. We're up in Dudley. Huey Ford defending the title he took from Joey Jacobs in Wolverhampton a couple of weeks ago against the veteran Kevin Pritchard. Then, the week after, we're back in London. Lennox Lewis has his first crack at a title. The title Frank Bruno once held, the European heavyweight title against Jean Chanet of France. That's at the Crystal Palace on the 31st of October. Then we're up in Sheffield, Wednesday the 14th of November. The Commonwealth and vacant British lightweight title, Carl Crook of Chorley against Tony Richards of Nottingham. But this, your call, I tell you, still buzzing 
over Nicky Hughes. Knockout, sensational knockout over Gary Jacobs. Your final words, Jim, on that fight? Well, you know, I've said all along, it doesn't surprise me, actually. I'm pleased for Mickey. I'm pleased that Gary J is going to be all right. But the fight lived up to all expectations. And, you know, the finish, well, you know, what can one say? It's grandstand stuff. Well, we did say, didn't we, that one punch was all Mickey Hughes needed. One punch, well, one opportunity was the only one he had, and he took it. We'll see you next Wednesday. Till then, keep your left out and your chin down. From Jim and me, see you next week. Bye-bye.